Hello and welcome to the session in which we would look at a bank reconciliation that could appear on the CPA exam or in your accounting courses. If you want to succeed on the CPA exam, bank reconciliation is a critical component. It appears on the exam again and again in either form of multiple choice or in form of simulation. Now this simulation that I'm going to be working with you today, I would consider this a tough, a, a hard simulation. In other words, if you can finish the simulation, then you should be good to go as far as bank reconciliation. And I will try to do so. Now, before I start, I would like to remind you that if you are a CPA candidate or an accounting student, you should check out my website, farhatlectures.com. If you are a CPA candidate, I don't replace your Becker, your Roger, your Glime, your Wiley. I don't do that. I can't do that. What I can do, I can be a useful addition. I can supplement those courses so you are more comfortable and you can add 10 to 15 points on your CPA exam. And here's my challenge to you. Here's what, here's what I'm offering you and here's the risk that you are taking. I'm telling you, I can improve your grade and push you above 75% 75, 75, uh, 75 grade for my monthly subscription. Now, are you willing to take that chance? That's the question. If you don't like it, you can cancel. Not a big deal. But are you willing to try it out to see if it's going to help you improve your knowledge, which in turn improve your preparation, which in turn improve your grade? And not for anything, check out my website to see how well is your university doing on the CPA exam. I do have this data. If you're an accounting student, I have many accounting courses that I can complement and supplement your courses. Please connect with me on LinkedIn and check out my LinkedIn recommendation. Check out what people said about my services when they used my services and my lectures. If you like this lecture, please like it and share it. If it helps you, it means it might help other people. Connect with me on Instagram and Facebook. Let's dive into the CPA simulation. Okay, there's a, like these are all exhibit. So this will be an exhibit. This will be an exhibit. This will be an exhibit. So you're dealing with three different exhibits here. Okay. West Goshen Company maintain a checking account at Wells Fargo Bank. Fair enough, bank statements are prepared at the end of each month, which they should. <laughs> the November 30th reconciliation of the bank is as follows. So this is the November 30th reconciliation. So they're giving you already a completed reconciliation. Now, if they do this on the exam, this is easy for you. Why? Because this is going to kind of remind you what does a reconciliation looks like. So here they're showing you the account per bank balance. Okay, less outstanding checks, add deposit, uh, add deposit outstanding or deposit in transit, deduct less outstanding checks, gives us the adjusted bank balance as of November 30th. So they're giving you kind of a half a solution, okay, and they will give you that if uh, because you will need this information for December bank reconciliation, which we're going to be preparing December. The company general ledger checking account showed the following. Now, this is the general ledger now they might give you a more detailed general ledger because here what they're giving you is the total receipts and the total disbursements maybe on the general ledger of the exam they could give you the check numbers but all the check numbers they should add up to 42,153 and all the deposits they should add up to 42,950 so this is the general ledger so first you want to make sure you understand what you have so the balance as of December 31st on your books is 4,440, how much cash you have as per your general ledger. The December bank statement, now this is the bank statement. So notice they're starting with 3,261. The bank statement is showing this balance because remember the bank statement ended up with 3,261. This is the bank statement. Then they have a deposits of 43,300. They processed checks of 42215 They deducted $25 as a service charge, and there was a non-sufficient fund checks for 470 Per your bank statement, you have cash 3848 Now, the question is, how much cash do we have? This is what the bank reconciliation is for. We want to make sure those two numbers equal to each other after we account for the reconciliation. So here you are giving three exhibits. November reconciliation your general ledger for December and your bank statement for December. That let's look at additional information. Again, I would say this is a tough simulation, right? The checks were processed by the bank include all the outstanding checks at the end of the November except check number 365. So the first statement is telling us the following. All these checks 
th those were the outstanding checks. They were all they were all cleared except check number 365, which is for two hundred and four dollars. Let me put it up here. There's two hundred and four dollars that's still outstanding. In addition, there are some December checks that had not been processed by the bank by the end of the month. And they're telling us there are outstanding checks, but they're not telling us what they are. OK, also, you discover that check number 411 for four hundred for six hundred and for six hundred and fifty dollars was correctly recorded by the bank, but was incorrectly recorded on the books as five sixty. Let's figure out what do we need to do with this check. Let's go back to check number 411. Check number 411. Well, it's it's not shown here, but let me tell you what happened. You wrote a check when you wrote the check when you wrote the check. You actually wrote the check. This is this is the check, and you wrote the check for six hundred and fifty dollars. So this is the actual check. You know, this is the name of the person that you paid to, the date, all of everything is correct, and you wrote it for six fifty. Now, what was that check for? Uh, advertising expense. So here's what you did on your books. You debited advertising expense five sixty, credited cash five sixty. So who made the error? First, you have to figure out who made the error. That's the first thing, because you have to find out who made the error. Well, the check cleared for 60. The check is for six for 650. However, you recorded it as 560. So who made the error? The company made the error. How much is the error? The error is $90. What does that mean? It means your cash disbursement is understated by $90 because you wrote a check for 650 and you said you paid 560, right? So simply put, in other words, if we go to your GL here, you said disbursements of 42, 153, we have to add to this disbursement negative $90 because your disbursements are understated by $90. So this is what this information gave us. It just showed you the check as well as the journal entry so you can visually see what happened. So kind of we took care of this. Included in the bank deposits, included in the bank deposits is a 1,600 checks a $1,600 deposit incorrectly credited to our bank account. That's excellent. What should we do? We shouldn't do anything, right? <laughs> no. But basically, the point is the bank made an error. Now, this is a bank error. Bank error. The bank gave us an additional $1,600. It was for someone else, and they gave it to us. Now, it could be the name of our companies are similar. It could be the account are similar. I audited credit union, and those mistakes happen. Those mistakes happen. The person punched in the wrong number because they were very close to each other, and they gave the credit to the other, to the other, to, to our company. Now, here's what I, what I need to tell you. This is the importance of a bank reconciliation. You know, if you really want to be unethical, which you should not, but I'm trying to show you the importance of a bank reconciliation. If you don't say anything about the 1600 and the other party, in other words, if they gave you 1,600 of cash, it means they took that money from another account because the other account was not properly credited your account was credited credited in the banking language means they gave you the money now if the other company don't prepare a bank reconciliation they may not discover that their account is understated okay so that's the importance of the bank reconciliation so if somebody wants to be unethical they wouldn't say anything and they would wait until the bank contact them and tell them look there was a deposit that wasn't really yours we need to take the money out but if you don't say anything and the other company don't prepare a bank reconciliation, basically they lost 1600, which is you should not do that. But the point I'm trying to make is the importance of a bank reconciliation. OK, so there was a bank error. Simply put, what, what I'm how do I translate this? It means your the bank balance here. It's showing the bank balance of 3261. We should deduct 1600 from it. We'll get it. We'll, we'll get to all of this. But this is what this error means. The deposit should have been posted to the credit of Los Garros company. That's fine. We don't care, but it's not our company. The non-sufficient checks has not been redeposited in the company and will seek payment by the customers involved. And here there was a non-sufficient checks of $470. What is a non-sufficient check? Simply put, somebody paid you $470. When, they, when you receive the check, you debited cash. $470, you credited your account receivable, $470, under the impression that this check is good. You don't know whether this check is good or not. Now, you took this money, you deposit this money in the bank, you deposit this check, then the bank's telling you that bank is no good. So what do you need to do? You need to debit account receivable, 470 
credit cash. You need to take out that money. And we'll look at that later on. This will be a book adjustment. Also on the bank statement, there was a $25 service charge. Okay, so this is just, I gave you an overview. Now we're gonna start to prepare. We're gonna start to prepare the bank reconciliation. On the exam day, what you should do what you should do, in my opinion, if you're giving a, a bank reconciliation, depending on how easy it is, if they're giving you a prior month bank reconciliation, showing you a prior month bank reconciliation, which is they're showing you November, if that's the case, I will start with my book adjustment. I think the book adjustments are easier in this problem. So start with the side that you think it's easier for you. Why? Because once you start with that side and you find the answer, then if, if you're confident that's the answer, at least you can plug in that answer in your bank side. So you'll get some points. In my opinion, the book side is easier for this uh, for this simulation, but I will start with the bank side. It doesn't really matter. So how do you start your bank reconciliation? I'm going to start with the bank side. Well, I'm going to start by what's my balance per my bank? What is the balance per my bank? Now, remember, the balance per bank is given to us. So we'll start with the with the balance per bank, which is 3,840. Here's the bank statement, and this number is given to you. So now you get some point. So what? how is the bank adjusted? Always on the bank reconciliation, you're gonna have to add deposit in transit and deduct what I called outstanding checks. Now the bank reconciliation, I have it much, much more, much, much more covered in details in on farhatlectures.com, but I just wanna let you know, like this is what should go there unless you have some errors, which we do have some errors in this example. So let's see. So we need to add deposit and transit. Now, what are deposit and transit? Deposits and transit are deposits that we made at the bank, we made, but it's not showing in the bank account. Now, how do I know what's my deposit and transit? I compare how much did I deposit? I deposited 42,950 and the bank is showing 43,300. Well, hold on a second. That does not make any sense at all. How is that possible, right? If I deposited 42,950 and the bank's showing me you deposited actually more, 43,300. 43, well, that's really good news, but that's not true. So this is your initial, this is your big, the big idea. Now you have to dig into this. Well, remember, so what's the difference between those two? What, what, what the difference is the bank is showing you you have $350 more, which is not, that's not really true. Okay, that's the difference initially. Why that difference exists? Remember, the bank gave you $1,600 deposit. Then you have to deduct this. So you have to deduct $1,600 from that deposit. Remember, they gave you money that's not really yours. That's fine. Also, what you have to take out, remember this, what you have to take out also, any deposits in transit from the prior month. Hold on a second. Why am I doing this? Why am I taking out my deposit in transit? Because my deposit in transit last month, I accounted for them. So I have to do, I have to go back to my prior month bank statement and I have deposit in transit of 1230. So I have to take out 1230 as deposit in transit. Why? Because this deposit belong to, as far as I'm concerned, those 1230, I'm aware of them. They belong to November. They don't, they don't belong to December. The bank is showing them in December, but there's in this number here, 1,230 that belongs to November, not December. Well, basically, once I account this, I notice that I have deposit in transit. The difference now is 2,480. Simply put, my deposit in transit, 2,480. It's simply simply put, after I make the adjustments, I notice that, in other words, in other words, here's what I'm doing. Here's what I'm doing. I take, I take 43, 43,300, what the bank is showing, that's what the bank is showing. I'm gonna deduct from it 1,600, which is the error. I'm gonna deduct from it uh, 1,230. Let me show you what the bank should be showing, then I will compare it to what I deposited and I will find the the missing amount. So let me just pull my calculator here. Give me one second. So I'm gonna take 43,300 minus 1,600, the bank made as an error, minus 1,230. So the bank really, uh, the deposits, the net deposit is 40,470 minus 42,950 
and that's the difference is the difference between this number and this number is 2480 it means i still have the deposit in transit for this month 2480 i'm done with the deposit in transit now remember after the deposit in transit i have to deduct any outstanding checks or any bank errors now i already know about one bank error which is the 1600 let's take it out because that money was not mine i have to take it out now i have to account for what we called outstanding checks now let's deduct the outstanding checks that's the second component that's the second major component on the bank reconciliation well here's what we are told we are told that the disbursement as per the general ledger 42,153 the disbursement per the bank statement is 42,218. Uh, so there's a difference between the two. Now, I already know that my GL disbursements is incorrect. I need to add $90 to it because I made an error. Therefore, let's start with that. So I'm going to start with taking 42,153 plus $90. Why the plus, plus means deduct an additional $90? 42,000. 153 plus $90. So my true disbursements were 42,243. Those are my true disbursement because I, I needed to add $90 because remember the check for the advertisement, it was incorrectly recorded on my books. I understated my amount by $90. Now the checks were processed were 42,118. That's fine. But we have to remember those checks, some of them included checks from the prior month why checks from the prior month because in november i had outstanding checks and those outstanding checks cleared now if they cleared now it means they don't belong in in december they belong in november so i have to take out any checks that were that belong to that belong to no uh, that belong to november and and i'm told that all of them were cleared except check 365 so if i go back to my november november statement a November statement this check was not cleared I'm already told that and the other one 126 159 89 and 370 were already cleared so what do I need to do I need to take these figures and deduct them from my checks processed okay so let's do that so I'm gonna take 42,218 and I'm going to deduct from it deduct from it the all the amount of the checks one check was for 126 another check was for 59 another check was for 89 and another check was for 370 therefore my cash my checks processed for the month of December was 41,574 okay now this is this is how much I wrote in checks 42,243 the bank processed 41,574 the difference between them let's find the difference 42,243 the difference is 669 but remember, in addition to the 669, I still have the outstanding check, the 204, check number 365 from November. So 669 plus 204, I have outstanding checks of 873, 873. Therefore, I deduct outstanding checks of 873. And simply put, I'm done with the my bank side. Because usually the bank side, the bank side, will have three things, deposit in transit, outstanding checks, usually, and this is an unusual. If there's an error by the bank, it's unusual. But usually, once you add, once you add deposit in transit, deduct outstanding checks, you should find your correct balance unless there's a bank error. And remember, the bank error could be minus or it could be a positive. Maybe they did not give you the money that you that belongs to you, right? Now we know the corrected cash balance is 3,855. Immediately, what you should do on the CPA exam Put that corrected balance under the book balance as well if you are confident this way you get credit for it now we need to now we need to prepare the book side of things what's the book side of things the book side are things that the bank charged you the bank charged you but you are not aware of it so it's on the bank statement but it's not on your books what could be those well we are we are already told the non-sufficient check and the service charge you're not aware of the service charged okay a non-sufficient check and you made an error remember you made the error for the ninety dollars so three things go on the book side let's start with the book side balance per books 4440 balance per books it's giving 4440 at least put this down so this way you can get credit for it remember three things we have to adjust the books for we're going to deduct and they're all deductions sometimes it's an addition sometimes for example the bank might give you interest like five dollar interest 
then it's an addition, but they're all deduction. Error and recording check, we already know this, $90. So we need to deduct $90. And for every thing that we do on the books, we need a, a journal entry, which we'll, we'll prepare in a moment. That's the first one. Service charge, $25, and non-sufficient checks, 470. Now I'll take 44, 44, 40, net dose, and the amount is 38.50. Now I'm good. I'm confident that my bank reconciliation is working. Okay. Oops, not this one. Now I know my bank reconciliation is working. That's why I told you, once you are confident in one number, put it in the other side as well. This way you'll get credit for it. Okay. So now my bank reconciliation is reconciling 38.55 to 38.55. Once again, this bank reconciliation may take you quite a bit of time if it's uh, if it's on the CPA exam. The key is to, at least if you can, you know, try to finish as much as possible, right? And you hopefully you can finish the whole thing. We're not done yet. We still have to prepare the journal entries. Remember, anything that you do on the books needs a journal entry. Well, we need a journal entry for the error. $90. We need to debit advertising expense. Remember, I showed you this early on in credit cash for $90. Miscellaneous expense, which is for the $25, debit miscellaneous expense or bank service charge, $25. Account receivable, remember, why account receivable for 70? Because remember what I told you, when we received the check, we debited account receivable, I'm sorry, we credited account, we debited cash when we received this, the checks, we debited cash for 70, credited receivable for 70 for the non-sufficient check. Well, when we find out it's, it's not good, we have to do the opposite, we have to debit account receivable and credit check. We credit the cash. And we credit the cash for the total 585. What I just did is I just went through the all through all through the journal entries to make sure you record the journal entries. You only do the journal entries for the book side, okay? The bank you don't do. If the bank made an error, that's their problem. They have to when they prepare their bank reconciliation, they will have to make this adjustment. So remember the journal entries are only for the book side. Okay? So any pro any issues you had on your books, you had well, not any issues, anything you need to update your books for. You had an error. This was an error. And usually, yeah, an error could be a positive or minus. For example, if you wrote the check for 560 and you deducted 650, then the error will be positive $90, okay? Because you deducted so much from your, from your checks. So if this was the GL and this was the check, I'm flipping the scenario. It could happen that you wrote the check for 560, but you recorded it for 650, okay? So the, the error will be positive. Therefore, actually, you will debit cash and credit advertising expense. But that's not the issue here. Service charge is a typical one. Make sure you get to the service charge. You debit miscellaneous expense or on the exam. If there's a bank service charge, look for bank service charge. If not, miscellaneous expense, debit expense, credit cash. And for the non-sufficient check, it's the opposite of what happened when you receive the check. You debit receivable and credit cash. Now, again, at the end of this recording, I'm going to ask you again, if you are studying for your CPA exam, to take my challenge, basically my challenge is, are you willing to risk $30, which is my subscription now, to find out if I can help you, if my lectures, if my system can help you improve your score substantially. Now, my lectures are mapped out to those courses, so it's easy. If you have those courses, it's easy to follow because they're mapped out to these courses. Are you willing to take that chance? That's up to you. Anyhow, once again, if not for anything, check out my website to see how well your university did on the CPA exam. As always, I'm going to ask you to study hard. Don't shortchange yourself. Your CPA exam is a lifetime investment. And of course, stay safe.